Okay, so in this video, it's a bit of an extension video for the course, but I'm going to explain to you how we can use calculus, or integration and differentiation, to actually derive the SUVAT equations that you'll see as part of the A-level physics or the A-level math mechanics part of the course. So, um, this is not part of the course, but those of you who are thinking you're doing physics engineering at university, it's a very good idea to know how this works, because this is the sort of thing you get interviewed on if you get to that point. So, let's have a look at how this works. So, you should know from before that to get the change in velocity of an object, you want the area under an acceleration versus time graph. And we, when we, we're dealing with SUVAT, we know acceleration is constant, so we know it looks like that. Um, so, from maths, you should know to find the area, what you do is you integrate with respect to whatever's on your x axis. So, Change in velocity is going to be the integral between 0 and t, so essentially between when we start and when we finish, of acceleration with respect to time, because time is on our x-axis. So in SUVA, acceleration is a constant, so this is a nice, easy integration. Um, so actually when you integrate this, it just turns out to be a t, so dv is equal to a times t. We know that the change in velocity is the final minus the initial, so v minus u. So we can put that together as v minus u equals at, or v equals u plus at, uh, which we should have seen before. But this time we just use a bit of integration instead of just doing it by the area from the graph directly. Okay, so that's our first SUVAT equation. Next, we're going to jump to a velocity versus time graph. So you should know the area under this graph is the change in displacement, or in calculus, that means that the change in displacement is the integration between 0 and t of the velocity with respect to time. So the difference this time is the velocity of an object is not constant, because we can see the velocity is changing all the time. So what we have to do is substitute in something the velocity at which there is only a function of time. So we're going to use this equation here, v equals u plus at. So even for v, we've put u plus at. So we've got u, which is a constant, it's the initial velocity. We've got a, acceleration, which is constant, because we're dealing with SUVAT equations. And we've got time, so it's only a function of time. So if we actually do this, this becomes ut, and this becomes half at squared. So the change in displacement is ut plus half at squared. And remember that when we're doing SUVAT equations, S stands for change in displacement, so we end up with S equals UT plus half A T squared, which again you should recognise from to studying this topic. Okay, so those are the more straightforward ones. I'm now going to show you the, the most complicated one of these to derive, um, just so you can see how that works. So, first of all, we have to mess around a little bit with units. So you should know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that by ds over ds. So because I've multiplied both top and bottom by ds, I haven't changed the equation. But what it allows us to do is mess around a little bit. So you'll see why I've done this. So you should know then that ds by dt is velocity, so that's why this v has come from, because that's ds by dt, and we've still then got this dv by ds term at the end. So acceleration, we can write in as v dv by ds. So in terms of why we've done that, so what we can do is we can take the ds to the other side. So we've got a ds is equal to v dv. So when we've got these little partials, the ds and the dt, we get rid of those by integrating. That's how you get rid of those, like the ds and dts, that kind of thing. So we're going to integrate acceleration between its initial displacement and its final displacement. And we're going to in integrate the velocity between the initial velocity and the final velocity, because that's with what we're with respect to we're going to be integrating. So that's what we've got there. So acceleration is constant, doesn't change the distance, so that just becomes a s. And v is going to become half v squared when we integrate with respect to v. So between the limits, that's going to be v squared minus u squared, each of them with half. And we take the 2 to the other side, and take the u squared to the other side, and we end up with v squared is u squared plus 2a s. 
So that is um, quite complicated, and if you haven't done enough maths, you won't understand what the hell is going on with this. Um, especially those of you in the upper sixth or year 13, this is probably more pitched at uh, you because you've actually done a lot of calculus already. Um, but if you don't understand this, I, I'm going to make your physics teachers hate, hate me, but go ask your physics teacher about this if you want to know a bit more about how this works. Because like I said at the start, this is a good thing to sort of have looked at if you're thinking about physics engineering at university, um, so do think a little bit more about this. Um, but that includes, concludes this extension video. I hope you find that interesting and or useful. Um, if you have any questions, please do comment on them.